All right, so what we want to do, let's take a look at uh, uh, crypto. Um, I got a lot of traders that have been inquiring about crypto lately because Bitcoin has been going crazy. We went from around, what, bottomed out around 15,500, got as high as, what, 28,000, some change back in the 26s now. But you're getting a lot of uh, movement out of Bitcoin, uh, out of some of these, uh, out of the crypto market. So I thought we could look at a, a few of these, uh, maybe the NASDAQ futures, uh, the S&P today, and so on. Um, it's the same methodology, first of all, with all these. And um, like I said, is that this specific call tonight is momentum. We're looking at how to project when markets can go vertical. When can markets when can markets go vertical? with momentum. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to see when momentum comes in. In fact, we can just call this momentum. So the markets, let's just go over this, can go two things. We can go vertical, right? Or we can go sideways. All right, so that's, that's typically what the market can do. It can typically go vertical, or meaning we're having a nice vertical move, like Bitcoin yesterday. Big vertical move, even today, had a big push to the upside. Or the markets go chop or sideways. So how can we, as traders, project these markets and stay away from these markets? All right? Because we need volatility. Volatility is your friend if you're looking to trade any type of futures, crypto, forex, currency market, what have you. We want to participate in vertical markets. Well, what we can do is we can use our indicator on our algo to let us know when potentially we have a vertical market, which is our momentum setup. Now, I'm going to show you a specific setup tonight. That's why we're doing this call. how we can use our zones to project vertical moves and then also how to project shallow retracement. So the first thing we need, I went over this this morning, but we're going to touch base on it tonight also in this conference call, is that we need to understand that vertical moves usually are set up by shallow retracements, meaning the Vertical moves that typically happen in markets, they're really not super deep retracements because that usually means we're in a big retracement market or a chop. They're buying the low, they're selling the high, they're going in between market profile. But when you start getting these shallow retracements, shallow retracements, shallow retracements, shallow retracements, this is Bitcoin right here, is that what happens is you get a lot of buy stops that start getting hit and you have a price insufficiency and they start marking the market up. How can we project that though? What's a way for us to look at these markets and try to project strength or weakness? One, we went over uh, this morning's video, but I want to recap it and we'll look at other markets too. One, stay on the side of the shallow color zone. So you that's your bias. All right, that's your bias whether you're going to be a net buyer or net seller. That's a bias to buy or sell. So, if you see these zones that are green, that's your bias to look for longs, especially on these longer Rico bars. So that is our bias. Now, when I talk about shallow retracements, I'm talking about not breaking this specific zone. So let's take a look at that. Stay on the side of the shallow color zone, zone, meaning if it's green, we want to stay on the color of the shallow zone. What's the shallow zone? It's this zone right here. 
That's your shallow zone. That means you have serious price strength in that direction if price is above it. A deeper zone, whoops, a deeper zone would be right below that. So this is called a full zone retracement zone. That's a deeper retracement for a full zone retracement. But if you're strictly looking for momentum, you want to stay, price wants to stay, you need to stay above the shallow zone. All right, so that's, that's one. Stay on the side of the shallow color zone bias. So two, a specific rule we have for momentum is it must be above the shallow at or above the shallow zone for momentum buys. If it sells, there will be red zones and then we want to stay below the shallow. We want to be at or below. So that's number two. You want to stay at or above when you're doing a retracement buy. So at or above. All right, so three. So we know this is the deeper zone in here and this is shallow. So three, when the market starts retracing, you want your signal lines. I have double signal lines down here, double. Now I have them overlapping. Some traders like to have them where they're on top of each other. That's fine. But what I'd like to see, I'd like to see my 7 and 21 signal line. My 21 is the longer, thicker magenta line, signal line. And my thin one is 7, 7 input. Now I do have these on the automated algorithm also. There's 7. There's 21. So three, what we want to do is if buying, hold above 40 bull retracement. Selling, hold below 65 bear retracement. All right. So that's a third hard rule that we use when it comes to looking for momentum. All right, so momentum set up. Stay on the side of the color zone. If it's green, you're a net buyer. If it's red, you're a net seller. Be at or above the shallow zone for momentum buys. Price does not want to get into this deeper zone before you get pulled in. If it does, it's not a momentum buy. And three, if buying, which we are, it's green, so it's a bias is up. We want to hold above 40 bull down here. So we want to hold above the 40 line, 40 bull line. Would be the green line down at this level on a retracement. And then we want to hold below the bear sell line of 65. if we're in a downtrend and we're red zones. So as price retraces, I'm going to show you how we can time this. Oops. Here's your bull line. Here's your bear. I have these in the algo also. There's your bear 60 line, or I mean bear 65 line. So that's a very hard rule in the room if you want momentum. You need to hold shallow retracement. And there's your bear 65 line up here. So bear 65 below and bull is 40 above. Okay? Very key rule there. The next rule for momentum, if both the signal lines are above 80 
then it's an extreme blow off possible rally. The 21 signal line is above 80 and 7 signal line holds 40 bull still a buy setup. Okay, so this is this is important. So the fourth rule that you got to look on the retracement is that when it retraces, you can use these two signal lines to judge if the market is possibly going to go vertical or not. What does that mean? Let me show you. Whoops. Make that lower. All right, so that's the fourth right there. If both signal lines are above 80, then it's an extreme blow blow off possible rally, meaning they're going to try to mark the market up. If the 21 signal line is above 80 and the 7 signal line still holds above 40, bull still by setup. So let's go through this then. Those are hard rules that happen every single day in the market. I don't care what market you look at, and I don't really, this works on all different Rinko sizes. You can use a 120-20, a 125-25, 130-30, 135-35, 140-40, 113-13. Depends on the speed of the market you like. But these are consistent rules through every single setup. Stay on the side of the shallow color zone bias. If it's green, we're net buyers must be at or above the shallow zone. On these retracements, we want to stay above this shallow zone. Right here. Hard rule. On the retracement. Three. If buying, our signal line on the oscillator below must stay at least above 40 if we're buying and stay below 65 if we're selling. All right? That's a standard default setting we have. However, if both the sig both signal lines, the larger one, the 21, I have it in darker, pink, or magenta. The lighter one is a 7. If both lines are above 80, that's your strongest possible level to look for an extreme blow-off rally or blow-off sell-off when they like to mark it up, mark it down. A lot of times you'll see this, like we did on Bitcoin, where you'll see the 21 signal line will stay above 80. Still save above 80 on the retracement here. And then our 7 signal line will stay above our 40 line. And then that's when you get an arrow. This is a great qualified setup. I, it doesn't matter. This is not specific to one Renko size. You can adjust to your, you can adjust to your, um, you can adjust to your uh, speed of the market that you like. All right, so let's take a look at these setups then. Those are the rules. Make sure we get the, all the rules down. This is universal in all markets. Now, let's take a look at setup set. That's our basic buy setup rules. So the market comes into where, in, first of all, momentum set up. It says, hey, I got to be, what's my bias? We're buying. It's green, right? This is Bitcoin uh, pretty much all day in Bitcoin from 10 o'clock to close. I mean, not to close, to, to, to 4 o'clock. So Bitcoin, we're, we're looking to buy Bitcoin, right? We're looking to buy. Where does the oscillator down here, my signal lines, tell me to buy? Well, they don't tell me to buy here on this retracement because my signal line broke bull 40 on both of them. My 7 and 21 both broke. So we can't buy this. Next one comes down. As we're retracing, my signal line broke 40 on both of them. 
can't buy this pullback. It's not momentum. Signal line comes. Now I get in by the shallow because I broke the shallow of both of these. These are FZR trades, a deep zone retracement. So I'm strictly talking about momentum. We'll, we'll do full zone retracements. These retracements we'll talk about in a specific conference call, these guys, how to buy them on FCR trades. I'm strictly talking about momentum. Momentum says I got to stay above my shallow retracement. Does this one stay above the shallow retracement? It holds it. That's why the arrow fires. My 21 signal line is holding above the bull, which is positive. All right? This would be an entry, but it's an aggressive entry because our signal line on our 7 pulled back below 40 bull line. So this would be an aggressive stance, but you're still going with trend to take a shot at the market because it's above the shallow retracement. You can't take a shot here. But let me show you when they both line up. The market rallies. We start moving up. And I can show you any market that you look at, any currency, any Forex, any stock, doesn't matter. I can show you when momentum is possibly going to come in. The markets could possibly go vertical ahead of time using this technique. When I see the first red retracement, first red retracement Rinko, look at your signal lines below. Look at both of them. As we're retracing, what are they doing? This is a leading indicator. It's not lagging because we have these zones that are telling us we're in a shallow retracement. We're looking for a continuation. They're trying to mark the market up. So as the market retraces, what we want to do is we want to see if we can get loan the market on a shallow retracement. So one Rinko prints, second Rinko prints. As it's printing, watch your oscillators. Well, I'm really good on my 21 signal line because I'm above 80. And we know, according to my methodology, above 80 is blow-off rallies. Below 20 is blow-off sell-offs. But now what we can do is we can match up we can match up our second signal line by letting us know if it holds above bull line. So it can pull all the way back to here and stay above 40 and it's still a buy setup because it's a smaller signal line, shorter signal line. As long as I stay, my shorter signal line stays above 40, and my longer stays above 40, you got a buy setup. Now, the, let's look at the best setups. All right? You want this signal line to stay above 65. You actually want both of them to stay above 80 because that's a blow off rally, possible blow off rally, blow off sell off. So if they're both pegged up and that arrow prints and it goes, an audible alert goes off on your computer. An audible alert will fire here on your computer. This is where the algo fired today on our Bitcoin yesterday on this big rally up. So at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, it said Bitcoin. And then also at uh, 11.48, you got a possible hard rally coming in Bitcoin. You held the shallow retracement, check. Your large signal line, check. We're green. We're buying, check. Our small signal line above 40 bull, check. Everything is set up for a buy signal. All right, market takes off. Start moving up. We get the next retracement. Retracement starts coming in. Your 21, your larger signal line, is staying above 80, which is very bullish. Now i got to hold my shallow retracement. I hold my shallow retracement. Now I want to hold my secondary signal line above my 40 bull line. It's holding above it. As it retraces, watch the signal lines. If it breaks below, if this shoots straight through 40 and starts going down towards 20, and you're cutting through this shallow retracement, it is not a buy setup. This is a leading indicator. It's not a lagging indicator. That shallow retracement should hold. So as you retrace, watch your signal lines. Your best case scenario is this. 
you want both of them pegged above eighty. Because if they're both pegged above eighty, that's telling you you got a possible blow off rally. It happened. We got my tweezer continuation. Arrow fired. Your audible alert fired off your computer here on Bitcoin. Look at what happened. Your larger signal line held above 80 and your smaller signal line, I mean your shorter signal line, your seventh signal line held above 80 also. That's your best possible case for a blow off rally. The market follows through. It goes to the next one. We come up for the next one. Market takes off. Market starts retracing. As soon as it closes red, watch your signal lines. Do I have my larger or longer signal line above 80? Yes. That's the first one. Am I above my shallow retracement? Yes. Am I green? Yes. Did my secondary signal line stay above 40 bull line? Yes. You'll notice this, that when you start using this technique, you'll notice this. The best trades to cherry pick are the trades that stay above shallow zone, one. They don't get into the deep zone at all. If it's, I'm talking about momentum, not FZR trades. That's a totally different conference call. Those are deeper retracements. There's called a deep momentum retracement, and it's wonderful, but there's certain rules with that. I'll have to go on a different conference call. I'm talking about staying above the shallow. But notice this right here. Notice this combination. Notice how the signal line, the longer signal line is above 80, and the shorter signal line is above 65. You see this a lot in a lot of markets. This is a wonderful setup. This setup is almost as fantastic as my extreme momos. This is the same exact setup over here too. You get a deeper pullback with a smaller signal. Larger is above 80. Now what happens if you notice they are both pegged? Those are your usually continuation trades on blow-off rallies or sell-offs. And I'll go in other examples here today on the S&P and NASDAQ futures and so on. But you can see you can dictate momentum based upon this. Now the S&P, if you're trading the S&P this morning, it was flat as a pancake, right? I mean, we weren't getting any signals, nothing lined up this morning at all. It's like waiting on the S&P, waiting on the S&P. NASDAQ futures like trade, 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 trade. And then the S&P, but then what did it do? Using this technique, it told you when the market started firming. It told you right here at this level, the S&P 500 was firming right there at 1015. Why? Why was the market firming here at 1015? Let's go over the rules again. One, if I'm looking for momentum, I need to stay above this shallow retracement on the S&P. I got to stay above here. Okay, so that check, we're good. Two, my bias is buying. Okay, so we're looking for buy setups. Check. So I'm above my shallow, but look at the both of my signal lines. I am my large signal line is above 80. And what did I just show you on Bitcoin? Well, that works out a lot. Over and over again. That guy right there. Look how you have a small pullback right at 65. You get the big push up and so on. Market moves on, it busts through my order block. I love when you bust through order blocks because they like to go to the next order block. There's an order block resistance, bust through. We get the retracement on the S&P. What's the signal lines doing? I stay right above 80 on the retracement. The key for you is this. Watch for the doji to form on any Rinko size you use. If you use a smaller one, you're not gonna have time because it's fast. But the S&P doesn't really crank that hard. So when you see a doji form or the, or the first reversal, when that audible alert fired here, qualify it. 
Is that a qualified trade? Yes. Why? Why is that a qualified trade? Because this is a momentum setup. I'm above the shallow zone. I just went over video after video how the order blocks are super important when you break through them and retest them. They like to go to the next level. But if you look at the signal line, I'm above 80 on my large signal line and my smaller one stayed above the bull. That is a buy setup. Market moves on, comes up, comes down, breaks through my shallow retracement. Right when it closes below my shallow retracement, what zone is this? This is will be in our next conference calls, how you can buy FZRs with order blocks. I love this setup because the stops are so small. We have a way on the algo, which I have programmed, to place an order on a first touch basis. And what it will do, where is my dot? There will be a first touch order right here at that level. The order has been placed at 84 and 3 quarters, plus or minus a tick or so. So 84 and a half or so, 84 and 3 quarters, 85. The low was 83 and a half. So that signal line was 85. The low was 83 and a half. Six tick heat on that trade. And the market explodes as high as 0, 02 and 3 quarters from our FZR trade of 04. I'm sorry, of, uh, of 85, sorry. Potential, 17 point upside potential. Six tick downside possible heat. Now what I'm going to do in the next conference call is you guys are getting this on the algo. Is this called an FZR order block trade? What an FZR order block trade, if I'm out of momentum and momentum breaks and I get into my deep zone here, if I got an order block like this resting right at my outer zone or in between my outer zone, that is an FZR setup. How can we enter? We'll use the signal lines below. The signal lines below, you can see if you're manually getting in, you can look for momentum to fire you in the trade once you get above your 20. Some traders like to look like for momentum and right when you get above 40, it has momentum and she starts cranking an FCR because FCRs, typically if FCRs fail, what they'll do, they'll hit this, oscillate, and just crank through. You won't see them continuate. Typically they won't continue through these signal lines up through 40 or up through your 20. So that's, that's for another conference call. That's an FCR. We'll go over this trade. I do have it programmed into the algo. We will go over this. Okay? So that's the S&P today. It, ha it showed you where the stronger position was. Here, that's a buy setup. Here, that's a buy setup. And that's an FCR. Okay? Now, if we move forward, let's go to the NASDAQ futures. This is the same exact setup. If you're going to trade the NASDAQ futures, you really can't go lower than a 120.20 because it's fast. I prefer the 125.25. I really like that. I prefer the 125.25 and the 130.30, two of my favorite Renko sizes on the NASDAQ futures. This is the NASDAQ micros. When you see this combination come up, and you'll see if you just want to watch this price action, how this setup works, put up the NASDAQ futures on a 125.25 and watch price action. Am I above shallow? Well, first of all, am I green? That's my bias. We're going to buy. I'm pegged up. My two signal lines are pegged above 80. Very bullish. I get two, a doji, which is a retracement or a continuation. I'm looking for my signal lines. 
to confirm. I get another doji that's a tweezer. The next screen bar, you got an audible alert on your computer. The arrow actually fired on our algorithm right here to enter. That is a qualified setup because I have both signal lines are pegged above 80. Market comes up. I get a retracement. I get the doji first, so it's either going to be another doji for a continuation or a red reversal bar, then a possible continuation if my signal lines hold. I'm in a grit, the best case scenario because both signal lines hold above 80. With shallow retracement, remember that shallow retracement is key. They like to mark the market up. They like to take counter trend traders out of the market. They take the counter trend traders out of the market again. Market comes up again. We come into now a deeper retracement. We don't get into the deep retracement that holds the shallow almost to the tick. But do I have a signal line by? No. Why? I pull back too much. My oscillator pull back below 40 and pull back below 40. This is not a buy. Market rallies up. So it's a higher low. Retraces. Look at my signal lines. I got my one signal line pegged above 80. Love it. That tells me get ready. My other signal line, as we pull back, as we retrace, red, 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 doji. Signal line stays above when the arrow fires. That's a qualified trade, a fire in the trade. So you can see it's consistent in the setup. And it doesn't matter what you use, meaning you can, you can look at multiple different markets. It doesn't matter really what market you look at. If you, if you do the Dow, Dow or the Dow micros, you know, or if you do um, even smaller time frames or smaller Rinkos, I wouldn't stay below. I don't like going below 18 on fast markets. It's just really fast. But, you know, it's still the same setup. It doesn't matter what you can dictate the speed with the Rinko size that you use. Okay. So if I look at a different market and I come in and let's just take a look at, uh, we'll look at the Dow, I guess. So when you're trying to look for continuations or what have you, you want to, it's the same concept. We want to look for the same exact concept. We want to see if the signal line is going to hold above or below our retracement level. Whether it be shallow or whether it be deep, we want to make sure that we are always holding above or below that level. All right, so let me pull up the Dow here real quick. But my point is, is that you can see this is universal. The key is this. You want to be above the shallow. This is the best momentum setup you could possibly get. You want to be above the shallow retracement, and then you want to be above on your pullback, above at least bull, but you want that signal, that larger signal line, you want it pegged. The best ones, you want it pegged above 80 for buys, pegged below 80 for sells. Why does that work out? Because it's catching a lot of counter trend traders, because a lot of traders are taught on RSIs or stochastics, what have you, by the oversold, I mean sell the over, over, oversold, buy the oversold, and sell the overbought. And that's why counter trend traders continue to get wiped out in the market. Because what they do is they keep marking the market up or marking the market down. So the key for us then is to recognize when these counter trend traders are coming in. And that's these levels. That's these levels, these blow off rallies or blow off sell offs. All right, so we just have to, as traders, recognize where are we set up. You know, where's the market set up to sell off or what have you. All right, and knowing if you're in a stronger, weaker, weaker position, that is something that will help everybody out um, from that. And like I said, if you go to, let's go to the Russell 2000. Let's just pull up a Russell 2000 and we'll pull up the Dow. Let's just take a look at some markets. And let's take a look at when the market gets pegged with momentum. You know, you can see when the market gets pegged with momentum. This is a very oscillating market. 
there's your momentum setup right here. Very simple to see. Right there's your 65. There's your 65 cell. There's your Russell or the Russell cell for the continuation. You can see when it's rolling over. Here's your Russell cell. Look how it got pegged. You can tell the trend change was coming up. There's below 65. Look at 65 hold. And look at my largest signal line hold. That's what started. You can actually anticipate trend changes with this also. Because look, if I break, check this out. This is very leading if, if you watch for this. That's what's cool about using this technique. So this is the Russell. And you can fit whatever Renko size is your speed. Right? So if a 120-20 is too fast, go to 125-25. If that's too fast, go to 130-30. You just the larger Renko size you go slows down, but the larger your stop goes too. So you gotta be aware of that. But you can recognize these on all time frames. So if I look at this, if I look at both of these, you could tell when the trend change was coming up. The trend change was coming up because we had our larger signal line pegged below, pegged below 20. So when this looked for a buy setup, so when we when you come into this buy setup right here, right, and it, it was a deep retracement number one too. So you're out of the shallow, so it's no longer a momentum setup, but just look look at this. You're into deep retracement, so that's not a trade here on the shallow. So that nullifies a trade, but look straight down. Look straight down. Your signal line broke here below 40 at this candle. It told you possible trend change right there. Then the largest signal line broke 40 here. You can anticipate trend changes by using this technique, it broke there. So when the oscillator comes back up and my signal line stays below 20 and I'm below bear of 65, could you short this? Yes, you can. You can get in early here before the trend change even happens, knowing your rules. Because the rule said, hey, I broke my shallow retracement. That means the market is not strong. There's no hardly no momentum, momentum dissipating. Remember, guys, you get into this deeper zone, you better have an FZR where the oscillator comes back and pulls you in. Right? That's why a lot of traders like to use the 21 because it just flatlined against the 20. Didn't even break it to pull in anyway. But you could tell it broke the shallow. The shallow tool is no longer a setup. And then this one, we came down. Shallow retracements are key. Shallow zones. It's red. There's my shallow zone. Did it hold when I got pulled in? Is my signal line below? Yes. My other signal line below 65? Yes. That is dual confirmation that this market should go lower. Right there. It doesn't matter what market you look at. Doesn't matter. You can look at any market here. This is a blow-off sell-off that happened at 8.52 in the morning today. This is a beautiful looking setup on the Russell 2000. Why? Look how I'm below my shallow retracements on the Russell 2000. I'm red. I'm only selling. I get the doji. When the doji comes up for a possible A, a continuation for another doji, for a tweezer trade, or B, it's going to be a retracement trade. What's my oscillators doing? They are pegged below 20. What I always tell you guys, the best cherry pick momentum sell or buy is below, both below 20 or both above 80. Like Bitcoin did yesterday, right? Like crazy. It caught a lot of the shorts because everybody thinks Bitcoin's going down to 22 to 23,000 retracement. So they're all, they're all trying to Short, short, short the market. Well, all the shorts got taken out yesterday and some today. Why? 
because they're not looking at momentum. Momentum told us Bitcoin was going up yesterday and today. Right? You crypto traders. Russell 2000, it told you it's pegged south right there. So, like I said, it doesn't matter what market. You can look at another market. It doesn't matter. We can pull up any market you want to pull up. Let's pull up another one. Let's look at crude oil. You're going to tell if the market is pegged to go north or not north just by using my dual technique and with the shallow retracement. So here we go. Pops right off the bat. I see a strong buy immediately right there that comes up. Takes you a half a second to see where the buy's at. And put these lines up. There's my 65. This is, by the way, in the uh, automated algorithm. You can put your bull and bear lines in. You can dictate what lines go in. I've actually added the double stick, uh, the double uh, a signal line for you to double confirm. Both have to confirm at the same time. All right, market rallies, crude oil. Right after lunch today, there's your doji. A doji comes up. What happens? We're going to get either a another doji for a continuation blow off rally b a red rinko bar for retracement as long as when that red bar starts printing the first red bar the prints our first doji starts printing look at your signal lines what are they doing what are they doing on crude on the pullback are they pulling all the way back below 40 if they do no trade but as it retraces retrace 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 Am I holding above shallow? Yes. This is where your automated alert came on your computer. This is the algorithm pointed this out today. That's an inflection point. Did the oscillator confirm that's a buy? Larger signal line above 80. What's the best buy I say in the room when both signal lines are above? Market rallies up. Get a retracement. Watch your signal line. My larger signal line is pegged above 80. Love it. Momentum is still in. Get a smaller pullback, you're still above 40, arrow fires, good to go. So you can, you can see, like I said, it doesn't matter what market you look at. If crude oil had more time, what would I look for here? I mean, the crude oil obviously closed. I would look for this market to go and retrace and stay above, I mean below my shallow retracement here. So this would be my sell area. I want a retracement. But I want my signal lines. I want my larger signal line to just stay right. It's going to come up. I want it to stay below 80, my larger one. I want to be pegged below 80. The best case scenario is my smaller one can be pegged below 82. That's the best, but it can come all the way up to 65. And if I get a reversal bar, that's a sell. So you can anticipate when they come up. You've got the zones give you your targets. It lets you know where they're at. Let's take a look at another one. This started it at noon. You can see where the trend change started it. This started everything on crude oil blow off rally. Why? How do we know that? It's red zone. Well. Two things, what I always teach traders, shallow retracements, shallow retracements, that's key. We got outside the shallow right here, head of shallow. This one was not a sell set, up, sell set up because that's not a trade right here, right? Signal line went above on the shallow retracement, went above my, my 65, so that's not a trade. Then it busts right through to my deep zone. What happens? What happens in deep zones? There's no momentum now to the downside. It's shift to the upside. What happened to my signal line? My larger signal line got above 80. The shift is up, not down. So can I buy this on a pullback and get in before the trend change? Yep. Right there. Why? 
My signal line is holding above 80. My lower signal line is holding above bull, bull buy. There's your entry. And the market explodes. All right? So you just, it, it doesn't matter. Here's another trade. This is it. 11.45 today, crude oil. Beautiful setup. Stays above below my shallow. My larger signal line, I want pig below. 20 for blow off sell offs. Above 80 for blow off rallies. But I need to confirm on my retracement signal line. It's got to stay below bear of 65. It does blow off sell off. Huge move in the market. Go to the next one. This is where you have a first touch limit FZR trade, which we'll get into. This is where I'm going to teach you in the next conference call. That's with a sell limit short. Sell first touch, not limit. So your short was 7220 on crude oil. This is an FZR short. 72 short, the high was 72 and a quarter. Right, 72 right there. I mean, 72 20. 72 and a quarter. You took five tick heat. Five tick heats, depending on the fill. Five to six tick heat. The market tanks. Can you pull in with the signal line? Yes. You can let the, you can go aggressively in with the smaller signal line. Going below 80. Or the larger signal line going below 80. That gets you in right here, this level. Some traders like momentum. They like when these signal lines get below the bore bear. I have a lot of traders that like to do that because there's momentum. That's called a momentum FZR. It's allowing the signal line to pull you in when you're breaking this threshold on the downside. On the FZR, you're breaking this threshold. But take a look at that trade. Look at crude tank. Is this a sell? Yes, because now we get back inside the shallow retracement. Then we retrace back up. I'm holding my shallow. I'm not breaking it. If you ever attended any of my conference calls, what's my favorite momentum setup is after a qualified FCR. FCR into a Momo short. Is my major signal line holding below 20? Yes. Is my second signal line holding below 65? Yes. Do we have a blow off sell off? Yes. So what you can do on the automated algorithm, you can have it meet both conditions. You can have it meet both conditions where it has to meet both signal lines. I have two of them in there. If you only want to meet them one signal line, put the exact same setting on both signal lines. Uh, these are all the same, uh, Lisa. These are the 125.25. Yeah, I'm either looking, I don't deviate too much on a lot of these markets. Uh, 125.25 is one of my favorite medium Marinko sizes. If you want automated all around as far as um, like a lot of setups, the 25 produces a lot, a lot of good setups. I, I like that a lot. I mean, you just got to know what speed you like. Either a 120-20, a 125-25, a 130-30, 135-35. I wouldn't go over 140-40. 140-40 would be the limit. I wouldn't go past a 140-40. The 14040, what it does, it takes a lot of noise out. It takes a lot of the noise. If you go down to 11313, 13, you're welcoming a lot of noise, right? So depends on your with qualify it this way though, it doesn't matter really because you're you're qualifying the setup, right? Through shallow or deep retracements and so on. 
Here's another FCR into a Momo. So look at this. Here's an FCR into a Momo. Here again is an FCR. I'm going to show you next conference call how the algo will go short right at this before pull-in bar. A dot will appear right there on top of this outer edge. That dot will appear. That's where the algo will go short on the first touch. 72.48. The high was 54. Six tick heat again. Six tick heat approximately here again. Comes into momentum. You get below the shallow. It retakes the shallow. Now, now this is just not by chance, guys. Of all the volume that comes in the market, do you think it's just by chance that these two setups look identical? Look at it. That's identical to this setup. Same exact, exact identical setup. FCR into momentum shallow. FCR into momentum shallow. Now, does the oscillator show weakness? Then you can qualify if you want to jump in that or not. But you can see the consistency of the setup. It's a consistent setup. So if I go to a 40-40, let's say, right? And I go into this 40-40. And I look at the performance. Now remember, past performance is not indicative of future results. That performance from 5.8 to 6.8. It had a small stop yesterday after a small win. It's down to around, what, 88%, 87.5% on the big contract. But this goes to show you, don't look at the, num the dollar amount. That's irrelevant. Look at the consistency of the setup. Because this setup on this algo is looking for shallow retracements. With what? Look at look at the look at the oscillator below. Shallow. Shallow retracement. Oscillator's pegged. Shallow retracement. Oscillator's pegged. Shallow retracement above my shallow. Oscillator's pegged up above my signal line. Shallow retracement, oscillator's peg. So, like I said, you can dictate the speed of the market based upon using this technique with the zones and the double signal line. And this just goes to show that that's taken every trade from 9.30 in the morning to 4 o'clock at night the last 30 days. So that, don't think it of Oh, that's awesome, automated algorithm. That, that's cool as heck. Think about it like this. I look at it like this. That just shows you the consistency of how shallow retracements work with momentum. It's pretty cool. So we just got to line it up. You got to line it up. All right, but these are the best right there for your blow-off, sell-offs, or blow-off rallies okay it's the same consistent setup you know it's just a beautiful looking cell right there shallow retracement the big signal line I like to see it pegged below 20 or above 80 with the shallow okay